everyone and welcome back to Just Drones. In this video today, we're going to be taking a look at three different sample problems for the Part 107 exam. Now these sample problems that we're going to look at, they have actually been taken randomly out of specific Part 107 exams. So who knows, you might see these same exact questions on your exam. The three that we're going to look at today relate to actual airspace questions and looking at specific figures, especially VFR sectional charts. So let's take a look at the very first question. At Coir D. Elaine, I hope I'm saying that right, which frequency should be used as a common traffic advisory frequency, or CTAF, to monitor airport traffic? So it tells us at the very top, refer to figure 22, area 2. So let's go look at figure 22, find area 22 in that figure, and see if we can find the information that we need to specifically find. All right, so now that we have figure 22 pulled up, and we make sure that it's figure 22 by looking at the bottom, because when you go and take your part 107 exam in person, you will have a booklet that has all of these figures in it. So make sure that you are checking and double checking that it's the right figure. You don't want to spend all this time trying to find an airport and it's not on that figure because you're on the wrong one. All right, so we're in on figure 22. Now let's go towards area two. And remember, we're looking for Kawir D. Aline. So right off the back, we can tell that this is the Kawir D. Aline airport, right? And how do we know that? Well, it's simple. We see this magenta airport symbol. So that tells us there's an airport right here. And then we see this information. And how do we know this information is related to this specific airport? It's easy. It's the same color. It's both that magenta color. If it was blue, it means it would be for a towered airport. But we're not dealing with a towered airport in this example. We're dealing with a non-towered. So we have Coir D. Aline, Boyington, which is the airport name, airport identifier, COE, AWOS frequency, which is 135.075. And remember, anytime you see AWOS, ATIS, or ASOS, it's referring to a weather frequency. So whatever frequency comes after that is going to be weather. So not CTAF, right? That was actually one of our choices, and we can automatically go ahead and throw that choice out because this is weather related. Next up, we have the field elevation, not important to us in this specific question. Uh, the star with the letter L, that means lighting limitations exist. Again, not important for us. The longest runway length, 7,400 feet, doesn't matter. But now we come up to another frequency. The only other frequency in this information about this specific airport. 122.8. So this would have to be the CTAF frequency, right? There's only two frequencies associated with this airport. And the first one we've already eliminated because it has to do with weather, since it says AWOS in front of it. But how do we know 100% that this is the CTAF frequency? You don't want to just guess on these questions. We want to make sure we're 100% right. The way we know is because of the letter C symbol right behind the frequency. Anytime you have a frequency with the letter C behind it, that is your CTAF frequency, your common traffic advisory frequency. So let's go back at the question and see what our options were again. All right, so we're back at the question, and we had A, which was 122.05, B, 135.075, that was the AWOS frequency, right? So we can automatically throw that one out. And then C, 122.8. So the only other frequency we had at that airport was 122.8, and we know for a fact that that's the CTAF because of the letter C. Therefore, in this question, this answer is 122.8. All right, so now that we did that one, that was a pretty simple one, let's move on to another uh, example problem. 
All right, so in this simple problem, it says refer to figure 23, area 3. So now we're going to be looking at a different figure and a different area. So what is the floor of the Savannah Class C airspace at the shelf area, also known as the outer circle? And it gives us three choices to choose from. A, 1,300 feet AGL. B, 1,300 feet MSL, and C, 1,700 feet MSL. So after reading this question, let's go ahead and pull up figure 23 and look at area 3. All right, so now we're in figure 23. So double check figure 23, and we're looking in area 3, so this general area. And we know we need to be finding an airport. And just from reading the actual question, it said refer to Area 3, and then it talked about the Savannah Airport and said Savannah is Class C, right? So we're actually looking for an airport that is towered. Remember, if it's a Class B, C, or D airport, it's going to be an actual towered airport. So looking at it, we can easily find it. You've got your Class C rings, or your, your circles, however you want to call them, to easily remember them by. So you got your inner circle, and then you have your outer circle. Looking at Savannah, how do we know it's Savannah? Well, first we'll look at the information over here. It's in blue, which means it relates to this blue airport. So you want to make sure that you have the the right airport first. So we have that. And of course it's class C. So the inner circle we're not really worried about because it wants us to find the floor of the outer circle. So we can just go ahead and skip the part of the looking at the inner circle and look at the outer circle. So there's specific altitudes that we need to find in this problem. So looking at the outer circle, we can see we are given two altitudes on the left side and on the right side of the outer circle of the Class C airspace. And those numbers are 13 and 41, 13 being below 41. Now, these are airspace numbers. It's where the airspace starts and where it ends at. Keep in mind, anytime you see airspace numbers like this related to a controlled airspace on VFR sectional, they're always going to be MSL numbers, not AGL, not above ground level. They're going to be mean sea level numbers. So keep that in mind when we go and look back at this question. So the very bottom number is going to be not 13 feet, but 1,300 feet add two zeros to this. You add two zeros to both numbers. So the outer circle of Savannah, that Class C airspace is going to start at 1300 feet and go up to 4100 feet. And those both are mean sea level numbers, not above ground level numbers. So it wanted the floor of the Class Charlie. So 1,300 would be the floor, right? It's the very bottom number. It's pretty easy to figure out because it's the number underneath this line. So you've got 13 and you've got 41. And of course 41 is larger than 13, so why would it be below 13? It wouldn't. So now we know for a fact that 1,300 feet MSL is going to be our answer. So let's go back and look at that specific question. All right, now that we're back at the question, from what we saw in the figure, we know for a fact that the answer is going to be 1,300 feet mean sea level. So this is where the part 107 kind of tries to trick you. They want to make sure that you really know your altitudes and mainly the difference between MSL and AGL. So keep that in mind because as you can tell here it gave you 1300 feet for two choices but one was AGL and the other was MSL. 
And if you don't know which one is which, especially when it, you're dealing with airspace, it would be really easy to uh, guess the wrong answer on this. So make sure you know the difference between MSL and AGL. All right, now that we have that one, let's look at the very last example problem. All right, so in this last example problem, it says refer to figure 22, area 1. What is the floor of controlled airspace around Sand Point Airport? And our three choices are 700 feet mean sea level, 2,131 feet mean sea level, and 2,831 feet mean, mean sea level. So just go ahead and look at this and know that all of these answers are in mean sea level. We're not dealing with any above ground level options. So let's go ahead and look at figure 22 area 1 and try to find this answer. Alright, so now that we're on figure 22, let's go ahead and zoom in to area 1 and find Sandpoint Airport. Pretty easy, right? Stands out because there's not really any other airports around uh, that are like Sandpoint. So just by looking at this, we know that it is a non-towered airport because it's magenta. And we have the Sandpoint information right here, right next to the airport. The airspace, the controlled airspace that we're looking at is surrounding this airport, right? And because we have this magenta shaded ring around it, that means that Class E airspace exists around this airport. But where does Class E start on the inside? Well, it starts at 700 feet AGL, above ground level. And then, of course, outside of this shaded magenta, we have Class E starting at 1,200. But we're not worried about that 1,200 number. We're worried about the controlled airspace in and around Sandpoint. So Class E starts at 700 feet AGL. Now, if you remember from the sample problem, there is not a single option that we have on that sample problem that is an AGL number. We had 700 feet mean sea level. Well, that's not the right answer. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. And the reason why is because AGL and MSL, above ground level and mean sea level, are two different altitudes. If you remember, again, mean sea level is the height above actual sea level. And then AGL is the height above ground level. So in this sample question, we need to find what it is above sea level. So we know class E, the floor of it, starts at 700 feet above ground level. But how do we find the mean sea level number for that? Well, it's pretty simple. You just have to do a little bit of math. If you go over here to this number, we know that this number is the field elevation for Sandpoint Airport which means that Sandpoint Airport, the field elevation for it is 2,131 feet above sea level. So that's basically a mean sea level number. So how do we find where the Class E floor starts at? It's pretty simple. We just add 700 feet to it. So 700 plus uh, 2,131 feet, we get 2,831 feet. Right? So our airspace, our controlled airspace above Sandpoint, the Class E, because remember Class E is controlled, Class G is the only uncontrolled airspace. So our controlled airspace, which is Class E, would start at 2,831 feet. So let's go back and look at that sample question. So now that we're back looking at this sample question, Remember our three options, 700 feet, 2,131 feet, and 2,831 feet. We just added that 700 foot number to the field elevation to get 2,831 feet mean sea level. Now this is one of those sample problems that would be really easy for you to get wrong because you didn't read the MSL and AGL numbers. So remember, all of these numbers were in mean sea level. Now, if that 700-foot number was an AGL number, it would be correct 
you would just simply choose 700 feet AGL. Because with Class E airspace on a VFR sectional, it's always depicted in AGL numbers. So if it gives you an MSL example, it's up to you to go find that MSL number. And to do that, you have to do just a little bit of math to find the correct answer. So that does it for today, everyone. Please, if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to go on YouTube. Find my channel at Just Drones and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I have tons of videos that help explain better airspace and part 107 knowledge and I'll continue to post those videos every single week. Have a good one everybody.